Houston, Texas, July 20th, 1969. At NASA Mission Control Center, the massive IBM System 360 Model 75 computer, which boasts processing power of 16.6 million instructions per second and up to eight megabytes of main memory, is employed to accomplish the greatest feat in human history, putting a man on the moon. People across the world marveled at this technological achievement. But incredibly, only six decades later, a handheld device weighing less than half a pound dwarfs the total technology NASA possessed in 1969. Today's smartphone contains a staggering one million times the computing power used to carry out the moon landing. What we had when they went to the moon is like nothing compared to what an average teenager carries around now. I mean, the kind of computing power, the ability to access information, the ability to reach people. It's an astonishing technological achievement. You can only imagine what's going to happen in 30 years from now. What we think is so advanced is going to be so not advanced. According to ancient astronaut theorists, at specific points in history, extraterrestrials have influenced certain individuals to allow humanity to make major leaps forward. And they propose that this has continued up until modern times. As evidence, they point to the visionary who jump-started the microcomputer revolution, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs was one of the greatest visionaries in Silicon Valley. The idea of what he was doing is how you popularize computing. A lot of people who were early in computing didn't think about people using them. And he managed to deliver into the hands of consumers a device that was usable, it was intuitive, it was easy to use, it was easy to understand, and, and that is not a small thing. In the simplicity and the beauty of it, he made something that was um, just perfect. Steve Jobs and his team of engineers at Apple harness technology that connected society digitally and put all the world's knowledge literally at mankind's fingertips. But the seeds of this technological revolution were planted in 1973, when the 19-year-old college student dropped out of school. Jobs was attending Reed College in Portland, Oregon, when he, along with one of Apple's first employees, Daniel Kotke, made a decision that would change not only the course of their lives, but ultimately the course of humanity. Fueled by his desire to find spiritual enlightenment, Steve Jobs traveled to India, with Daniel following a few months later. Together, they discovered a Hindu guru known as Haidakan Baba. He was discovered at about the age of 18 doing yoga in a cave. But there are legends going back that the same figure had appeared all the way back into the 1800s. Haidakan Baba claimed that he had no mother or father. But who was this character who had no known history before the age of 18 and was said to have manifested out of thin air. He professed that he was an immortal being. Steve Jobs did spend some time with him. Haida Khan Baba actually gave him an initiation by giving him a spiritual name. This is a traditional kind of initiation. So they were formally initiated by this guru. Babaji had said that he was a celestial being who had come to Earth to help enlighten our planet and to advance us forward. And we have to wonder, is it possible that Stephen Jobs was being influenced telepathically by an extraterrestrial entity named Babaji? Ji? 